Hello, in this lecture we will continue discussing chapter 18. We're going to talk about the balance sheet in terms of the manufacturer's balance sheet. So we got reporting manufacturing activities. We're going to compare the merchandising company to the manufacturers and look at the difference between the two. So we have the service company, then we've got the merchandisers who make stuff, it's kind of like Amazon. They buy stuff and then sell the inventory. Then you've got the manufacturers which has the added information in terms of inventory being the raw material and then the in-process material and the finished goods. So if we think about a merchandiser, they buy finished goods and sell finished goods. So if we think about Amazon, that's what they're going to do. And they have to deal with inventory, but they don't have to deal with that manufacturing process. The manufacturer will then buy materials, then produce, and then sell the finished goods. So we're going to have that added information that we're going to have to deal with with a manufacturer being the production process from the raw materials to the materials that were in production, finally to the finished goods that will be the result. So, manufacturer's balance sheet. We're going to compare, once again, the merchandiser to the manufacturer. So, if we look at the balance sheet being assets, liabilities, and owner's equity, and we look at the assets section of the balance sheet, we can see that we will have for a manufacturer, cash, receivables, and then the account called merchandisers in merchandise inventory. That is, will be the difference between the service company and the manufacturer for the most part. Now we have inventory, whereas we would not have that if we were simply a service company. When we move to a manufacturer then, we have the same information. We've got cash, receivables, but and we still have inventory now. But the inventory is now being broken down to the manufacturing process. So if we make something like, let's say we actually produce guitars, we're going to have raw materials, the wood in the corner. We're going to have... Uh, goods in, in process, the guitars that are halfway done, then we're going to have the finished goods, the guitars that are done, ready for sale. That will be the, the new thing that we're going to have to think about in terms of the manufacturing process and how do we allocate the cost to that production process. Within the merchandising company, uh, it's fairly simple, obviously. We bought the inventory. We know how much the inventory cost. We might have to uh, implement some cost flow assumptions such as FIFO, LIFO, and AVERAGE. But uh, that's the process there. When we go to the manufacturer, then, we bought raw material. We are also put in the labor to, to make the manufacturer, and we have overhead. These are all things that we're going to want to apply to the finished goods inventory cost when we sell it. So the manufacturer balance sheet. So if we think about the manufacturer's balance sheet, then, we have the new thing on there being inventory. Inventory is basically broken down into three pieces. The piece that's similar to the manufacturing is the finished goods. So the finished goods are completed, they're ready for sale. That's similar to the inventory that is on the manufacturers and they're ready to go. But included in that is the raw material, which is of course the first area, the material waiting to be processed. In this case, if we're talking about guitars, it's like the wood in the corner. The wood being ready to be produced into a guitar. And then we got the, the goods in process. That would be the wood that's like, it's all glued together but the glue hasn't dried to finish it to make it a guitar so that would be in process how do we allocate the cost between those two and then we're going to have the finished goods within finished goods and in process remember it this looks like we only have raw materials in the finished goods but that's not the case when it gets into the goods in process we also have labor we also have overhead it's not just the wood that goes into the guitar it's the labor that goes into the guitar. It's the overhead in where we made the guitar, the cost of the building, the cost of the supervisor and everybody involved that we need to include in finished goods and the process. So income statement. We have the manufacturer's income statement. Now, we are, of course, going to focus on the thing that is different. The income statement is income minus expenses. We're going to focus on the thing that is different being inventory and the thing that is different from the merchandiser to the manufacturer being the difference in the names of the inventory. So when we think about a merchandiser, we need to know what the cost of goods sold is. So when we think about the income statement, we've got income minus expenses. Our most important expense is the cost of the stuff we're selling. So we're going to take the income minus the cost of the goods that we sell gives us the gross profit. Then we're going to subtract out the rest to get to net income eventually. So that relationship being the most important, how do we calculate cost of goods sold? It's similar to like a periodic inventory system in which we're going to take the beginning merchandise inventory in a merchandising company, 
we're going to add to it the cost of the merchandise that we purchased. That would give us the cost that is available over the time period that we're talking about, being a period or a year for the most part, minus the ending inventory will give us the cost of goods that we sold. So for example, if we started with 10 units of stuff, 10 guitars that we have, and we, in this case, bought 10 more guitars, we'd have 20 guitars. And then if we counted the guitars that we have still remaining, there were only five at the end of the month or year. We're assuming that we then sold the 15 guitars. So the cost of those 15 guitars then would be the cost of goods sold. If we think about that on the manufacturer, same exact calculation, only thing changing is the names. So we've got the beginning finished goods. We're not talking about the raw materials. We're not talking about the goods in process. We're only talking about the finished goods when calculating the cost of the goods that were actually sold. So the goods that were available for sale at the beginning are the finished goods. Then we're going to think about not what we bought because we bought raw material. What we're thinking about is the stuff that went into finished goods, the stuff that has now been completed and is now available for sale, the cost of goods manufactured. And then we're going to subtract from that the ending finished goods, the finished goods that are still left from the goods that were available for sale because they had been completed. And that would then give us the cost of goods sold in a manufacturer environment. If we think about, if we look at the segment of the balance sheet that calculates cost of goods sold and compare the, man, the merchandising and the manufacturing, it would look like this. We would have for the merchandiser, the beginning merchandise inventory plus the cost of what we purchased. And that would give us the goods available for sale. So again, if it's we're talking about a month or a year, that's what we could have sold throughout that time period because that's what we had on hand throughout the month or year at any given time. And then we're going to subtract out what is still there in terms of dollars and the difference between what we could have sold and what we have not yet sold is what we assume we did sell. That's the cost of the goods sold. If we think about the manufacturer, same concept. We got the beginning inventory, but now we have the cost of goods manufactured. We're not talking about the goods we bought because we bought raw material. We're talking about what was in finished goods inventory plus what we manufactured. And we're going to have to calculate what we manufactured. And then we're going to have the uh, goods available for sale less the finished goods inventory gives us the cost of goods sold. So same calculation, the cost of goods sold. It's just that now we have some different terminology and we're going to have to figure out how much was the cost of goods that we manufactured. So a flow of manufacturing activities. So this is just a pictorial flow. Later we'll try to think about this in terms of T accounts. How does the flow of the inventory work? Notice that all of these are basically assets. We're talking about assets through this whole section. We're not only talking about assets, we're talking about inventory. So this whole flow process is basically just getting into inventory and it's really good practice to look at it even if you don't deal with inventory because it's good practice in terms of debits and credits and T accounts, just moving from one segment to another segment. And that concept will be in many different types of accounting, whether it just be service accounting and you don't have any inventory at all or like governmental accounting when we start moving between funds, things like that. So the debits and credit concept of moving through the inventory process applies to a lot of areas. So in this case, we're going to start off, of course, with the raw materials. That's what we bought. So we're going to have the raw materials at the beginning, raw materials purchased. We're going to do a similar type of calculation to see how much raw materials were then transferred. Beginning raw materials plus what's purchased minus ending raw materials will give us what got transferred from raw materials to the um, production process. Work in process, often called WIP, R-I-P, uh, W-I-P for the production process, the inventory that is in production. So if we're talking about guitars, raw materials being the wood, then it goes in the production process. We'll have the beginning production process. And once again, we'll add to it what we added to it, which includes the direct materials of the wood. But that is not the only thing included in the working process. When we think about the working process, we got the beginning working process plus the materials that we transferred in. And we have the direct labor that is in the conversion to make the guitars and we have the factory overhead the depreciation on the factory the maintenance on the factory area the supervisor salary the glue and stuff the small things that go into the guitar those are what are going to be included into the guitar and then we could subtract out whatever the finished goods are the working process that have not been completed the difference is what has been completed which would then be transferred to the finished goods inventory section 
So when we think about finished goods inventory, we've got the finished goods at the beginning of the period that were finished last period, last month or year, but had not yet been sold, plus what we made and have now completed, less the ending finished goods inventory would give us the amount that we finally have sold down here on the income statement. So notice this whole process, when we think about materials to the production process to the finished goods, has nothing to do with the income statement. It has nothing, it basically it's all in the assets and it's all in inventory, a particular asset account that we're combining all these costs in there that in the past we might have thought about as expenses. So remember that direct labor, depreciation, things that we thought were expenses before and they were expenses in a, in a service company because uh, we expensed them when we incurred them and used them to help us generate revenue are now being added to the asset, the asset of inventory, because those expenses are being used to generate an asset, and they do not get expensed in this manufacturing process until we sell the inventory, and they will be expensed in the form of cost of goods sold. That's when the income statement will be reduced for the cost of the goods we sold. That cost of goods sold includes not only what we purchased in terms of raw materials, it includes wages that we paid on the direct labor. It includes factory overhead, which could be depreciation on the factory, and these, these other types of things that we will finally expense at this time.